On the show today, we will have an update from Abdul on the ongoing situation uh, in Gaza. Uh, not much has changed on the ground from reports that are coming in. More Palestinians have been killed. The Israeli onslaught continues unabated. Also, humanitarian aid has not been able to come in in the extent that is required for the over 2 million residents of Gaza. But our lead story today, uh, on the 4th of October, the Pakistan government this is a story that we've not been able to cover so far on Daily Debrief, announced a decision to expel undocumented Afghan refugees, uh, the deadline for which is the 1st of November, and that deadline is now here. What does this mean for almost half of the 4 million Afghans who have sought shelter in the neighboring country? And Turkey celebrated 100 years of a republic on Sunday with celebrations involving thousands of people across the country marking the historic occasion. A lot has, of course, happened uh, over the century. And Turkey has gone from its founding roots as a secular republic to military coups, of course, and now the era of Erdogan. Uh, what does this historical evolution of modern Turkey uh, tell us and how does it inform our understanding of Turkey's role? in the world today. Salams, you're watching Daily Debrief and we are happy to tell you that we're coming to you from the People's Dispatch Studios here in New Delhi once again. Hopefully we will be able to access this space and continue our coverage on People's Dispatch. Uh, before we go any further, take a second and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, Abdul, before we get into uh, the le our lead story for the day, which is, of course, Pakistan, uh, if you could give us a quick update on what's been going on in Gaza since we last spoke. Uh, as far as the Gaza, the war in that uh, inter uh, in Gaza is concerned, of course, the, uh, the ground offensive is continuing uh, and the bombing, of course, continues. Uh, uh, and uh, according to the Red Cross, uh, Palestinian Red Cross, there have been uh, bombings in and around Al-Quds Hospital, which basically threatens uh, uh, the thousands of people who have taken shelter into the hospital, apart from those who are injured. Uh, apart from that, uh, as far as the uh, West Bank, uh, the occupied uh, West Bank is concerned, the Israeli raid there also continues. And uh, uh, there has been uh, uh, reports, there have been reports that more than six uh, people have been killed in the last 24 hours there. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, to just to say briefly, because of the uh, lack, of, lack, of the te lack of time, uh, the, what situation the Gajans are facing is by and large similar, despite the fact that there was an UN Security Council uh, emergency meeting in which uh, Again, all the countries, including the U.S., have expressed concern about the rising death toll uh, in Palestine, and they have kind of uh, raised concerns about the need of ceasefire. Of course, mm -hmm. nobody knows when the real resolution is pro uh, presented, whether you, what U.S. will do. But at least when it comes to verbal assurances, it seems that by and large, uh, there is some kind of uh, um, common understanding uh, on the uh, on the civilians that uh, in, in in Palestine, there is one more thing. Uh, during the uh, Security Council meeting, uh, uh, the UNRWA had basically uh, kind of uh, officially confirmed uh, uh, the, the 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 figures which were quote unquote contested by some of the uh, Western countries about the number of people, a number of Palestinians in particular children killed uh, by the Israeli uh, uh, Israelis in last uh, three, week, uh, three weeks and so. So uh, yeah, so this is by and large the situation and, and there, is, there seems to be no uh, uh, reason for uh, any uh, hope that there will be any improvement as far as the bombing, uh, Israeli bombing is concerned. And even on the humanitarian front, there is hardly any improvement, yeah. Uh, and, and very little indication that any is coming uh, quickly, as Abdul was pointing out. Um, and our uh, next story, which is our lead for today on Daily Debrief, uh, isn't a particularly great story either because uh, 4 million Afghans uh, call uh, Pakistan home. Uh, many of them have been, of course, ha have moved there over time as uh, various conflicts 
uh, took over their home country and economic prospects steadily dwindled. Uh, we've reported before on the present uh, humanitarian economic uh, crises in Afghanistan uh, where a large percentage of the population faces uh, critical food shortage. There is, uh, you know, mass food insecurity uh, alongside, of course, the impact of uh, natural disasters and the political uh, sort of still ambiguity, turmoil, uh, and issues that, that remain. In that context, Pakistan on the 4th of October, this is a story we've not had a chance uh, to report on on daily debrief in this uh, period, uh, announced a decision to uh, expel all uh, undocumented Afghan refugees, around 1.7 million of them. Many of them have, are already making their way or have made their way thousands uh, back across the border where uh, Abdul prospects remain bleak uh, or are even more bleak than they were, uh, you know, whenever these people manage to get out and at least find sem some semblance of uh, safety as well as livelihood uh, in Pakistan. Well, uh, it's a very difficult situation for uh, more than 1.7 million. That is the number of undocumented uh, uh, Afghan Afghans in Pakistan. And most of them, are, of course, not most, at least a large number of them, around 600,000 of them basically came uh, post uh, the recent takeover uh, uh, of Taliban uh, in 2021. Uh, and these are the people, of course, who are uh, who have the immediate threat of being persecuted if they go back uh, at this moment uh, to their own country, uh, uh, because uh, it, it, it is assumed that Taliban uh, authorities have will will take them as hostile uh, or someone who does not favor uh, their rule, and that that is one thing. Uh, apart from the fact that the more than a million people, uh, Afghans who have been living there for decades, and now some of them are living there for decades now, and they have uh, not been able to get documentation done primarily because a large number of them are really poor in the sense that they do not have enough money to even bribe the quote-unquote officials, state officials, to get some kind of documentation as a proof uh, for their uh, quote-unquote official status within the Within Pakistan, so a majority of them uh, are poor people uh, uh, without any uh, uh, means of livelihood back home, and uh, uh, and it and, and given the fact, as you rightly pointed out, the overall economic condition in which Afghanistan is today, uh, it is in no condition to provide uh, even if it wants to. Whether we are not sure whether the uh, Taliban uh, government is really uh, willing to uh, work for. Uh, creating uh, equal op uh, opportunities, creating opportunities for the, these uh, people there. Uh, even if they are willing to do it, they do not have enough resources to uh, uh, kind of uh, do much thing, much uh, beyond a point. So uh, it is, it is going to be a complete disaster uh, uh, as far as the economic and security. Uh, uh, if you look at them as from the economic and security point of view. Uh, for the majority of the Afghans who are going back, because and and they do not have any option. By the way, they, in fact, there are already reports that uh, hundreds of thousands of people have quote unquote voluntarily left the country in the last uh, uh, four weeks uh, since the order was passed. Um, and more and more people are uh, moving towards the Chaman border and other uh, border points. Uh, and uh, that is one side of it. The other side is, uh, it is also not clear whether Pakistan authorities are ready to uh, handle the situation, uh, given the fact that the uh, large number of Afghans are going to try to cross the border at once. And there will be a chaos uh, yeah. all across the country from wherever these people are coming, okay. whether there is there are enough uh, uh, means of communication for them, how they're moving, do they have enough economic resources to carry whatever uh, uh, essential commodities or essential goods they have uh, carry their families and if they're they're anyhow they're ca able to reach the border whether they will be able to cross it uh, uh, in, in a human uh, way whether it is possible or not and uh, uh, pakistan government has even uh, issued if you see their language it is really harsh uh, uh, threatening almost uh, uh, of detention for millions of uh, for all these millions of people who 
they assume that uh, if they are trying to escape uh, uh, moving out of uh, Pakistan and try to remain somehow. So uh, they have issued threat, uh, threats, they have issued kind of uh, uh, orders to the police there, uh, security forces there to create uh, temporary uh, jails, uh, temporary uh, detention centers. The condition of those deten detention centers, uh, the Pakistan is not very, uh, uh, they, of course, they're uh, is not known for uh, any kind of yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good conditions in the prison. And uh, we can assume that, that it is going to be really a uh, disaster for uh, if if the deadline as uh, predicted, as pro uh, announced by the government is literally followed. This is going to be a, another humanitarian crisis unfolding in Pakistan in next few hours. Tens of millions already, uh, Abdul in different ways reeling from that uh, you know crisis which uh, not only in afghanistan but also has a, has had a major impact on on pakistan we've talked about uh, the state of the economy there and, and what's going on with the cycle of uh, you know imf funding and loans and uh, debt and uh, and issues with of course uh, the government that are going on another indictment recently against uh, the former prime minister imran khan all of that uh, is going on so so uh, where does all of it uh, or this forced expulsion at this point, Abdul, fit in uh, with what's happening in terms of domestic Pakistani politics and, and uh, or do we just see it as disagreements between the Pakistan government uh, and the Taliban, uh, which is now de facto ruling Afghanistan? No, of course not. It's the primary reason being the structural uh, problems which Pakistan is facing and their ruling classes uh, uh, being unimaginative, uh, being unwilling to explore uh, the possibilities other than looking for ad hoc uh, measures. And they think that um, uh, for their economic con uh, uh, problems which Pakistan is facing, the kind of restrictions which IMF have imposed, has imposed on the uh, 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 different kinds of social, uh, uh, kind of social policies, which uh, is required given the fact that the majority of the Pakistanis are not in a position to kind of uh, uh, depend on market in any way for their mm. uh, their basic uh, living. So, uh, in, in that condition, uh, Pakistan government thinks, it seems, that's, that's, that's the only way one can explain what is happening at this moment. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, that if we, they are able to kind of create this kind of one, of course, event, which diverts the attention of people to some extent, of course, it has an impact all over the country because Afghan refugees are everywhere. They are in Karachi, they are in Lahore, they are in uh, rural areas, they are, they are in urban areas. They are not only restricted to the border areas with Afghanistan. Yeah. So uh, it, it is a national uh, issue. It's a national event, which basically uh, before the crucial elections, which is uh, going to be conducted in uh, uh, next year, first, of, uh, first month or second month, um, that basically provides a kind of diversion. The other, of course, instead of addressing the real issues, the other uh, uh, thing that is behind this is it also, uh, but I don't know uh, how the economic logic works. According to the uh, Pakistani media, the overall uh, expenditure which a state will incur if this plan of quote unquote expulsion of uh, Afghan quote unquote illegal refugees is carried out more than two to three billion uh, rupees, uh, Pakistani rupees, will be spent on this exercise if it is carried out. This is early estimate. We don't know exactly what, what will be the real amount. And uh, in a country which is uh, struggling to survive, uh, uh, save its economy from complete collapse, it's a huge amount to waste. Uh, thinking that if 1.7 uh, million uh, Afghans move out of uh, uh, Pakistan, it will help Pakistan economy in some way. This is a complete uh, lazy way of thinking yeah. uh, of addressing the economic issues in Pakistan. Uh, as far as the security concerns raised by the uh, uh, caretaker government in Pakistan at this moment, that this Afghan, uh, illegal Afghans are primarily reasons behind uh, the increasing uh, quote-unquote terrorist attacks happening all across the country. The, mm -hmm. Tehreek Taliban Pakistan is getting support because this, these illegal uh, uh, Afghans are becoming cadres of it. It's completely bogus argument. Pakistan has 
had more uh, terrorist attacks before uh, uh, this uh, new fresh uh, quote unquote of gun uh, immigration coming in the number of terrorist attacks have not gone down even if pakistan has earlier taken uh, ex- ex- expelled uh, hundreds of thousands of afghans in the past ha- has no uh, real impact on the uh, number of attacks uh, the real uh, reasons uh, uh, behind the uh, rising uh, violence against uh, 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 non-state violence in pakistan is primarily structural uh, and it is a long term uh, 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 reason it cannot be addressed by expelling some of them uh, who are considered to be quote unquote illegal aliens these are the words used in pakistani media or the pakistani official documents to describe them so uh, it is uh, so security concerns are uh, bogus that is a justification just to kind of carry for carry out this uh, uh, huge event uh, which has a demonstration demonstrative effect they, they think the pakistani government thinks and 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 uh, it is also uh, not related to uh, as some of the pakistani uh, uh, officials are claiming uh, 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 to uh, the recent uh, disagreements between taliban government and pakistan uh, the border closing which was ha- which was the case for uh, for a month for months uh, this has uh, nothing to do with that as well it is primarily uh, uh, as uh, as i said before an, an attempt to create an event to divert the attention from the uh, uh, from addressing the real economic reasons in pakistan and using uh, the exact playbook and and language that we have seen used in, in every one of these uh, cases abdul Uh, they have the copied uh, the texts of uh, uh, pr- uh, produced by europeans then they yeah. talk about the refugees there uh, and r- european right wing extreme right wing by yeah. the way yeah uh, and at the same time of course uh, looking back at the history of pakistan as as accepting of refugees and and taking credit for or trying to at least take credit in the narrative for that as well uh, abdul we we'll, we we'll leave uh, Pakistan here for the moment because we'll of course also see how uh, this deadline is actually enforced by the caretaker government and and then the kind of impact it will have because also on the ground I I would assume uh, four million people Pakistan is a populous country but uh, these four million people will have established roots will have established ties and is bound to have a, a political impact domestic of course an economic impact. Uh, because refugees also contribute to the economy i don't know how that is skipped all of a sudden but but yeah uh, but we will move on to our next story and we'll ask you to hang around for uh, for a bit to talk to us about that it's a uh, 100 years uh, of turkey which was celebrated uh, the turkish republic that was celebrated uh, country wide uh, in in turkey on sunday uh, from uh, mustafa kamal atatürk to uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. A lot has happened uh, in Turkey, as it has, I suppose, all all over the world in that hundred years. We're not trying to summarize, of course, that history. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the time to sort of get all the details from Abdul uh, on the show. Uh, but but broadly speaking, give us some context, uh, Abdul, of that th- this evolution that has taken multiple different strands, sometimes divergent, sometimes parallel. uh and and where that has brought us to broadly speaking uh where we are today 100 years later well uh turkey today uh, is not the turkey which uh, mustafa kamal had uh, basically uh, had a vision to establish and if you see the uh, the there is a complete change not only in terms of the social and political uh, uh initiatives uh, taken by kamal, mustafa kamal at the time in 1920s um Uh, it is there is also an, uh, a complete economic shift uh, which has happened uh, in turkey so a country which was primarily uh, trying to uh, imitate the european uh, modern ways of living and ways of uh, doing things has basically has basically evolved to accept much more conservative uh, set of ideas both politically and socially uh, and you, if you see the uh, the kind of emancipatory uh, project which uh, mustafa kamal had when it comes to it when it came to uh, women when it came to uh, the minorities when it came to a kind of uh, uh, both religious and cultural uh, uh, minorities uh, all those emancipatory 
emanci emancipatory projects uh, have been by, by and large forgotten at mm. least for the majority of the turkish population today and the justice and development party which has been ruling uh, uh, and in 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 turkey since uh, more than a, a decade now uh, mm. has basically uh, has kind of uh, led a transformation which basically goes backward on every count uh, uh, turkey which basically uh, had a kind of uh, uh, had attempted to kind of uh, give women certain rights in 1920s 30s gave women a right to vote and so on and so forth in 2020s comes uh, uh, where it basically denies any existence of uh, fem femicide and walks out from istanbul convention which basically asks for nothing more than uh, illegalizing domestic violence and uh, taking action against all kinds of domestic abuse so that one uh, example basically establishes how turkey has shifted uh, mm -hmm. from a, 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 a complete modernizing uh, uh, a society a society which wants to aspires to be modern to a society which wants to kind of preserve whatever uh, cultural heritage it seems to be so it has become a modern looking from a modern looking country uh, to uh, a more autonomist uh, kind of uh, uh, going back into the history and so on and so forth this is about a uh, cultural aspect only uh, when we talk about economic issues we see that today turkey is much more uh, uh, kind of regressive when it comes to the rights of the working class in particular um, uh, uh, the the rural uh, peasantry in particular there is no attempt uh, to kind of address those issues or very little attempt to do that despite the fact that turkey is uh, in uh, in a phase uh, at least for uh, first 7 8 years of uh, Erdogan uh, rule uh, a booming economy becoming one of the g20 countries uh, in terms of gdp uh, becoming uh, one of the richest countries uh, in terms in in the in the entire west asia and uh, north africa despite all those economic achievements when it comes to working class the, uh, the overall situation has not improved so this uh, uh, kind of mixed of course one on one side the, the military coups have stopped happening for uh, the one last attempt was a failure of course in 2016 mm -hmm. but uh, uh, and and there are claims that the democracy quote and quote liberal democracy has become much more strengthened in society but on the other side uh, the one man rule has also become much more stronger erdogan is unchallengeable uh, in turkey today it has never been the case after of course uh, uh, the initial phases of mustafa yeah. mustafa kemal so this That's is you can say good. coming back to a kind of rule it's Mustafa Kemal. So another kind of uh, example of a, a mixed uh, uh, legacy which um, uh, Turkey has gone through for a century uh, in, in its last century. Yeah. Uh, to broaden the context a little bit and look at it from an outsider's uh, perspective, Abdul, how uh, Erdogan also uh, carries Turkey's international sort of uh, ambitions, uh, the role of being a regional player. We, of course, talked about the Ukraine grain deal uh, in the past uh, on the show and of course uh, with being a member of NATO uh, plays a major part in that. Uh, so while perhaps there is a domestic effort to counter these uh, opposing trends sometimes, uh, the, the establishment or the strength of uh, Erdogan's establishment organization uh, what does that mean for the wider region uh, going forward, and 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 do some of these evolutionary processes actually play a role, or are we just are we sort of starting? Uh, it's a different phase altogether in some sense. Well, on that front also, there is a mixed uh, uh, mixed signals. You can say Turkey initially, of course, uh, uh, when it came out uh, from this first world war. It adopted a policy of neutrality for a while in, in the case that it did not participate in the Second World War uh, uh, completely. Uh, uh, from that onwards, it, what has Turkey, uh, if you see, uh, uh, in terms of foreign policy, in terms of its regional policy, has joined NATO uh, in the 50s, has tried to become a member of European Union. Its membership is still pending. That is a uh, former applicant of it. Though Europe, uh, uh, European Union, which was quite, uh, uh, it seems, open to adopt, uh, accept Turkey as a member in the early uh, 1990s, or uh, yeah. uh, uh, has completely gone back to it. Uh, there are two reasons behind it, of course. One, 
despite the fact that uh, uh, turkey is a nato member it has uh, you can say uh, taken a very radical step to kind of uh, portray itself as a much more non aligned uh, 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 country with a foreign policy which is independent to the dictates of nato on the independent of the dictates of the us in last few years at least and that basically uh, has angered uh, the us and its allies in europe to basically kind of uh, uh, completely uh, uh, trying to uh, sun turkey's attempts to become or recognized as a european country there they have of course used the erdogan's policies or economic erdogan's politics uh, as an excuse uh, mm. to kind of deny it uh, but the, it has basically a larger geopolitical uh, reasons behind it and that is basically turkey's attempts under erdogan to maintain a balanced relationship With, with russia on the one side uh, and uh, on the uh, nato members on the other side and that basically we have seen how during the uh, initial days of ukraine war turkey was the only nato member or only country which had some kind of influence to kind of start a, a, to mediate a talk between the ukrainians and the russians istanbul talks we are talking to, mm. talking about so uh, that is one apart from that his non alignment also comes with uh, uh, erdogan's uh, attempts to kind of portray turkey as is a, a, a regional hegemon a regional power wow. and that basically has also uh, reflected in its policies towards syria its policies to uh, towards libya or uh, trying to uh, intervene at least in the first um, decade of erdogan's uh, rule uh, to uh, in different other countries uh, in the region even now turkish forces are intervening have been intervening quite regularly in iraq uh, they are already there in syria they are already there in libya so uh, that is an attempt to become a regional hegemon when it comes to military power and uh, portray uh, and quote unquote independence from the us uh, dictates in the region that is one uh, part of it the second part of course is related to it basically on and off with other regional hegemons which mm. it sees as a rival so whether it is saudi arabia whether it is iran uh, um, to some extent egypt there uh, there have been attempts to kind of uh, there has been hot and uh, uh, cold uh, relationship with these uh, countries except for uh, russia one can say erdogan's uh, 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 foreign policy has not been stable when it comes to other regional and global players in last 20 years and that basically is uh, something which is uh, i of course we cannot pass a judgment at this moment but something which is very interesting when we see the uh, the overall evolution of turkey's uh, uh, foreign policy in the uh, in last uh, 100 years Right, Abdul. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that's all we have time for today. But thank you very much for uh, uh, inputs on actually some pretty complex situations in in both these countries, as well as the update uh, from Gaza. I'm sure we'll have you back on the show very soon. Right, as I was saying uh, right at the beginning of the show, we are back today, uh, coming to you from the People's Dispatch Studios uh, in New Delhi. Our coverage of these stories and also uh, other major events around the world continues. Uh, as well as movement news from around the world uh, on peoplesdispatch.org don't also forget to give us a follow on the social media platform of your choice uh, from abdul uh, myself and the entire team at people's dispatch thank you very much for watching we'll be back with another episode tomorrow until then goodbye